The Sundanese puzzle is a little trickier than most of the ones you've seen so far on this channel. So let's have a look at the data. Now, it's fairly easy to establish, if you look through it carefully, that we're dealing with two separate forms here for the plural marker. So in most of the words, the marker is this R. If the Sundanese word, the original one, begins with a vowel, like alus or indit or ulin, then R is just added at the beginning. If the Sundanese word begins with a consonant, then the R appears after that first consonant. So far, so relatively clear. But then you find that there is a different form, which is this al. Now you saw from the introduction to the puzzle that the English translations were basically irrelevant. So it doesn't matter, in other words, whether it's a noun or an adjective or a verb. That's not the determinant of whether it's ar or al. You also probably saw the hint, which said that it was to do with a sound that occurred later in the word. Now, in this case, that sound, if you look through those four words, is this one, the R. And this is to do with something linguists call dissimilation. If the same sound occurs in two consecutive syllables, it sometimes sounds a little awkward in a language, and sometimes languages adapt to that by changing the sound slightly. So, for instance, in that hormat, it's halormat in the plural. Harormat is a little bit harder to say. Similarly with naur down the bottom. Nalaur is the plural. Naraur is a little bit harder to get your mouth around. Okay, so we have our basic system. Let's look at the puzzle bits. So ayim, there's no R there. And we saw that if a word began with a vowel, it was just R at the beginning. So that's easy. Arayim. Poho, forget, is going to become paroho, because there's no R elsewhere in the word. But this one, bunghar, that has an R at the end. So in this case, we'll have the al ending rather than the R, and it'll be balunghar. Then we've got these extra ones with the ngah at the beginning. Now, as you probably can see, the al and the R are still there, but this time they're a syllable later. So what we have to assume is that when you've got the ng on the beginning, they come after the second consonant rather than the first one. 